So I'm sure you've seen all those videos on how to turn regular islands into tarantula money making farms, but one thing they aren't telling you is why that it actually works and how you can use it to fill your museum with every fish and bug in the game. But this video will teach you that. Hey guys, welcome back, I'm Epoch and today I'm going to explain to you how you can farm specific bugs and fish in Animal Crossing's New Horizons. Now let me start off with saying that there is completely nothing wrong with any video you have seen on how to farm tarantulas or scorpions by stripping islands bare and sell the bugs for profit. It's a valid tactic and I'm doing it as well just to make some cash. But I feel like it's selling the idea behind it short because you can use it to farm any type of bug you want. It's not only for making a lot of bells quickly, if you understand the principle behind it, you can force spawn the fauna you need. Now, Quick side note, if you haven't heard of Tarantula Islands just yet, stay tuned because this video will also teach you how to do that. But let's just stop talking about what we're gonna do and let's just get started with the basics. Let's get started with the basic rule. There always needs to be a certain number of bugs and fish at an island. Now on an island that you visit by buying a Nook Mile ticket, there constantly needs to be about 4 to 5 insects of any kind on the island. And about the same thing for the fish, but at this time I can't begin to estimate numbers on that. And if the fish that live in the sea share that number with fish that live in ponds or rivers, but the system behind it remains the same. There needs to be a certain number of insects and fish at the island at any time. And we can use that to our benefit. Next we need to start talking about spawning conditions. Now as far as I see it, the type of insects and fish that spawn at your island depend on 5 things. Now before I go down these 5 things, I quickly want to note that I will leave 2 links in the description that will help out a lot with these things. The first one is an excel sheet from another YouTuber called Austin John Plays who has been keeping up with the spawn tables. The second one is a fan made wiki for New Horizons. Both offer a lot of information to help with what I'm about to explain, so be sure to use those tools to your advantage after you heard the five factors that can decide which fish or insects spawn on the island. So let's get started with number one, the hemisphere you chose when you started the game. So depending on which one you chose, you'll see completely different fauna. For example, the northern hemisphere can catch right now tarantulas, while the southern hemisphere can catch scorpions, but not vice versa. Number two, the month that you are playing. Certain bugs and fish can only be caught during specific times of the year. During March you were for example able to catch fish like the yellow perch or the string fish. During April you cannot. Now you can see for the fish and the insects that you already caught in the Curterpedia in your cell phone. There you can actually just see which months they will spawn. But you will also find that information on the two links in the description. Number three, the time of the day. Certain insects and fish only show themselves during the day or the night. For example, anchovy can only be caught during the day, moths can only be caught at night. Number 4, weather conditions. A lot of bugs won't come out during the rain, but snails will only come out during the rain. Same with the fish called Kulakant. And the last one, number 5, is the one you have the most control over as a player. The possible spawn points. Now, this is very different for fish and insects, so we're gonna separate these two. Let's get started with the fish. These have basically four possible spawn points at this time. The sea, a pond with no flowing water, in the river, and the origin point of the river on top of a cliff. Now, for example, anchovy can only be found at the shoreline, carps can be found in the pond, loach in, only in the river, and the golden trout only in the river at the cliff top. You can control which fish spawn where. Now the free method is just by scaring away at the other three locations. But the easiest one will be the use of fish bait that you gain by digging up manila clams on the beach. You can find these by looking on the shore of your island for the little holes you'll see appear and disappear again and again. Dig there with your shovel and you should find them very easily. And you can transform them at your workbench into fish bait that you can easily use to spawn fish wherever you want. Now let's talk about the possible insect spawn locations. Certain bugs will only appear on or near certain elements, or when you interact with those elements. Now, for example, a snail will appear on a rock if it's raining, a centipede may hide under a rock till you hit it with a shovel, a wasp nest may be hiding in the tree, a citrus longhorned beetle will only spawn on a tree stump. 
Ladybugs will only show themselves on flowers, fleas will only spawn on villagers' heads, flies will only spawn on trash outside, and an ant will come to feast on your spoiled fruit whenever they find one. I mean, the possible spawn locations for bugs seem infinite, but if you need specific bugs for your collection, it's super important to check out those links I mentioned before and see how you can trigger the spawn of those specific bugs. If you want your island to be a safe haven for butterflies, mantis and ladybugs, plant a huge amount of flowers. And just leave that old tire you found during fishing outside your house till you find that stupid fly you are after. And this is where the tarantula farm actually becomes a prime example of this method. Because it relies essentially on removing every spawn point possible. Now if you haven't heard of it yet, it basically comes down to going to a randomized island that supports bug life during the evening. Destroying every rock, picking every flower, chopping every tree down and removing every tree stump so nothing can spawn except insects with a spawn point on the ground. Now for April and March that were only tarantulas, tiger beetles and wharf roaches in the northern hemisphere. So if you scare away the other two by merely running over them, you can catch all the tarantulas you want. But the same method works for the others. If you want for example a certain mantis, go to an island that has flowers, get rid of all trees, rocks and tree stumps everything except the flowers so only those types of insects can spawn. Chase everything away until you find the mantis you're after. And in case the insect that you're after needs specific plants, you can dig up those plants at your own island, bring them to the randomized island, plant them and then it will be forced to spawn there too. Now I strongly believe that if you check the links in the description every month, see which ones you need and how you can use their spawn point to farm them the most efficiently, that your life will be a lot easier. But that is just my opinion, let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you liked the video be sure to give it a thumbs up so other people can find it too. And I want to thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next one. See ya!